One, two. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we are doing another installment of the Saltwater Tank series. And today, we're getting a bit of an upgrade. I don't know if you noticed, but there is something different in the background here. For one, I've gotten rid of one of the uh, power heads I had floating around in the background just to provide a bit more water flow. And I've replaced it with a wave maker. Now this was just a cheap wave maker off of eBay. It is called the Sun Sun Wave Maker JVP110. I will put the eBay link down in the description below if you're interested. It cost me 30 bucks. It took probably a month to get here, which was fun, but you know, with what's going on in the world, the post is very, very slow. My reason for picking up a cheap one, it was at least half the price of any of the decent ones I could buy online. And I figured, if it's crap, I just don't use it, and I lose $30. Okay, it's terrible, but it's not as bad as it could be. And if it's good, I use it, goes well. If it's good but needs some improvements, I can use it and maybe buy another one to put at the other end of the tank and get some interesting wave patterns going on. So for me, it seemed like a pretty good situation. So I went with it, and I'm glad I did. Because it's pretty decent, it's providing a nice um, bit of water flow. I've left the other power head in here just because it also adds uh, extra filtration because it does have filter media in it. And if I want any corals in here that need higher flow, I can put them around here and they'll benefit from both of them. So that's the first upgrade. The second upgrade arrived today. And <laughs> I have been waiting a very long time for this, which again got delayed by all this post. And it was a new light. I am finally upgrading from this Petworks plant light to an AI Hydro 32 HD. Now I bought this online from livingroofaquariums.com.au They were so helpful because I was really worried that it hadn't been shipped and it turns out that they had delays in getting products in which further pushed delays in getting them out and sending them off. So thank you so much for the guides over there for getting this to me because I'm really excited to use it and I've been wanting a decent reef light ever since I actually started this. And now I've got it. Yay! So how about I show you guys what's in the box? So what do you actually get inside the box of the Hydra 32 HD? Well, you get the light itself. And it is very heavy. You get a little quick start guide. You get some instructions to download the app. Lots of cables. And that's about it. What does not come with the light itself is any fixtures, any hanging devices, any stands, um, anything like that. It is just the light and the cable. Which is alright because I'm planning on DIYing mine and saving a little bit of money. Now upon unboxing this light, I've realized there's going to be a few issues with my plan. Number one is the DIY light fixture that I'm considering making is going to be much harder than I thought it was. The way they've designed it is you need special screws and special fixtures to actually get a latch on this, which I thought maybe there'd be just a screw or something I could use or a, a hook or something in the main portion of it that I could hang something off or hook something off, there is not. So unless I design something that's literally going to clamp onto it like this, or something that holds it up from the bottom, I can't do much. So basically what I was planning on doing is using some rigging like this sort of stuff and hooking it to the device and just hanging it from the roof. But I've had a bit of a play around with it and even though there's a few little spots in it that I could be able to hook something on. I don't think I'd be able to hook it safe enough for a very expensive light. So for now, what I'm going to do, and this is going to be a very, very much an evolving process, I'm probably going to stand some little things under it, put, give it some legs, so it's not resting flat on the glass, it's a little bit raised. 
And that's where I'm going to leave it for now until I can come up with a better solution or I actually go and buy the sand itself. So that's a little bit annoying, but I mean, I can see why they want you to stick to their brand devices rather than DIYing and such. So it's going to need a little bit of innovation here. So are you guys ready for the new light? One, two. So for anyone interested, I thought I'd also show you how you set up the app. So first you have to make an account, then you need to add your light, call your tank something, and it should actually find your light for you if your light is turned on. Then you need to go through a whole bunch of updates. This will take quite a while. So, I don't know, go make yourself a cup of tea while you're waiting. Hopefully it'll be done by the time you get back. And I am not joking, in the time that it took for that to be completed, I got myself a cup of tea. And it's still going. Ah, there we go. Wonderful. So, let's see what it can do.
Oh, I've had to turn the lights on because I spent so much time trying to set this up that the sun has forsaken my room. <laughs> so yes, I changed my mind. The light is not standing on little legs. I ended up working out that I could wrap elastic around the edges in the grooves and it was pretty stable so from that I've hung it. I've decided that putting it on legs and having to move it every time I want to get in here is not only going to be a pain it's also going to be a little bit dangerous. So these lights there's a reason they have a fan they get very very hot which I noticed when I was mucking around with it. So what I've done instead should allow me to avoid having to mess with it too much. That being said, I have tested how hot it gets where the elastic is, and it seems to be okay. That is something I'm going to have to monitor, and this is probably going to be a short-term solution until I can actually make some decent brackets for it. But at this stage, it seems to be working really well, and I can't believe how good this Alien Eyed Zoa is looking. It is so bright. Like, I thought it was bright in the white light and it is so much brighter under this. The app itself has taken me 10 years to work out. It's really cool, there's a lot of cool things in it which you can do, such as scheduling your lights. You can also change the lighting throughout different times of the day. You don't have to have just like one up, one down sort of thing. It can mimic the phases of the moon, which is really cool. Very, very cool. You can run all these demos. Uh, I've yet to fully work it out, but for example, I can show a more warmer light and get colder and colder, which is pretty cool. I can also make it darker, make it brighter. I can adjust the individual colored LEDs to what I want. Now that was just what it came up with, but for me, I've found I like this sort of look a bit. So I like it looking something like this, which is more of the blue and violet tones, but it's not as blue as that blue you saw in the presets. Now I have no idea of what colours are good for corals, so this is something that I need to look into, of course, but once I have I'll be able to tune it to not only looking aesthetically pleasing but also good for the coral growth. I can't get over how good the clowns look with this light, I mean, that orange is so bright and so vibrant. Um, sadly, my fire goby has not come out. I think he's gone to bed. Um, but I bet he's gonna look really cool as well. Um, I saw the six line race before. That looked amazing, uh, but it has been hiding in the rocks and in the shadow, so I haven't had a proper look under the lights. The coral beauty is going berserk, as always. It also looks really stunning, and it's just, I don't know, this is really cool. So of course, this is gonna take a lot of getting used to. But for a start, this is awesome. I'm really glad I took the leap and actually invested in a good light. I was having crazy brown algae issues. I wasn't really seeing a lot of coral growth at all, especially not from the zoa hiding in here, the pink one. The alien eye was doing alright, the morphs were doing okay. I knew that if I wanted to start looking at harder corals, it wasn't going to cut it. So that leads me to talk about where to go next with this tank. I want to start looking at LPS corals. I don't think I'm going to do any SPS for a very long time, so purely looking at soft corals and LPS corals. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments down below, that would be absolutely awesome. As I said, I'm completely new here, I'm looking for easy corals and maybe like slightly harder, you know, higher flow, higher light, because now I do have the capabilities of producing that. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I know I did. I've been waiting for this light for weeks. This is so exciting for me. If you have any lights that you recommend, definitely put them in the comments down below. It'd be really good to have a little bit of a conversation down there. I had my reasons for choosing this light over others, but maybe you can provide a different argument. And so again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are all keeping well. This is a quite a trying time for all of us and it's sometimes really good to just go and escape in your hobbies. <laughs> For a little while. I hope you're all keeping healthy and happy and giving yourself some time. This has been the only saltwater video so far that was filmed during this crisis. All the others were filmed before it. If you were wondering about why I hadn't mentioned it during those videos. So guys, stay safe and I'll see you all next Friday. Bye.